Then uh, they brought the son at this seat house and said, because we are not able to find you where you are, we have to go on disappointed. You stay here. Though they purchased the house in 78, he chose to stay in that place only from 79. And then from 79, lot of queues of devotees, lot of people from foreign countries, lot of people from every part of India, they used to come and wait in the queue. If they want to test him with an idea, he will say, Father blesses him, put an apple and send him away. He knows they are trying to test me. They are not come with devotion. Otherwise, he will call everybody. Suppose he is doing some father's work and somebody disturbs. He will say, go to Arunachal and come at 4 o'clock in the evening. So that's how we started little by little. We became well known. And then people rushed together. Same great, great people uh, like Chandra Sekhar, the former Prime Minister, came and had his blessings. I met him twice. Then some governors came. Lot of foreigners came. And then uh, he had to be acknowledged the divine person because things are happening without our knowing. But he knows without our knowing things are happening. Then people started having faith. Then he was there for about till 23rd November 1993 and he was there leading a life by himself but everybody has seen him smoking. I was also wondering when I met him for the first time, he's a dirty man, he's smoking, how can he be a Swami? One cannot believe it. I thought I've been caught in the webs of a false Swami. That was my impression. And I thought the next day they will put in the papers, uh, Justice uh, of the High Court is caught in the web so far, Swami. Nothing happened. But the first time I went inside, I saw so much of radiation. I couldn't uh, believe it. So then only I knew. I thought it was a protocol, he took me inside. But then I saw his face. Then he was very fine. I thought this must be the Guru. Then he asked me suddenly, this beggar wants to smoke. Will you give me permission? I said, sir, it is your house. I don't know how to address them. I said, sir, it is your house. Your cigarette, I did not get it. I heard it health is spoiled. You want to smoke? No, because of the justice, you have to give permission. I said, permission granted. Then he started smoking. The beauty of that smoking was, one cigarette will be only with one puff, it will be thrown. One cigarette will be burns his fingers, it will be thrown down. I have been told, uh, depending on the sin portion of the uh, assembled devotees, the work will be done for us will have that. But one more thing even here I must say is, Swami told me personally, what do you think about my smoking? Swami, knowing you now, I cannot give any answer. You only know. He said, this beggar does not like smoking. When he used to come in train and all that, when somebody smokes, he will get a headache. He will rush to another compartment. But why is this better smoking now? When Papa Ramdas gave this madness, divine madness, he gave me this madness also. Do you think I'm enjoying smoking now? No. That madness, I'm keeping them, then lighting see. I'm not enjoying smoking. Then I tried to find out from some people. They said when these people like Yogi Ram Suratmar were almost always in Samadhi state, if they have to come down to Sahaja state to be with us for some time, they just have some digression. He smokes, then this is from the Samadhi state, he comes to the Sahaja state and then talks. Himalaya, there are so many saints, you take Ganja or opium. Some saints are used snuff. So all these things, because they are very kind and merciful to us, to come and bless us to show the path, uh, which they, they need not have to do because they are always almost in covenant with God. For our sake they have come down. For our sake they smoke or put us snuff so that they can be in a Sahaja state. Then uh, I had the, my first meeting in 1989. Then I didn't have much of belief in him. I went away. But then he sent word to me asking me to participate in several functions and all that. I said, I don't know anything about him. Then he sent some people to tell me about uh, 
tell me about those uh, people, about him. Then functions were organized. In one function, my brother and I saw Yogi Ram Surat Kumar physically walking out to the photograph. We were all very shocked. How can a man, photograph man coming out? Then we came soon thereafter to Yogi and told them, you came out this photograph. He laughed and laughed and said, this beggar does not know anything, his father is a Leela. That's what. Then, then my uh, devotion to him became more and more. Then when I come and have a darshan, he will ask me to give a telegram, pass on information, because he has a lot of time for me, a lot of time for me. Uh, so he will see that others are not there. It seems from 1987 he will not give darshan inside. But every time he gave me darshan inside after locking the door. All that happened inside is a big story. We will not go into it very now. But I developed so much of faith in him that I knew he was not an ordinary individual. Even then I did not think him to be God. I thought he's so powerful. He is not what we see in his body. He is all pervading. Then I asked him, so many Mahatmas are giving lectures and giving us directions. What do you do like that? He said, Father has asked this beggar to take care of the people who take tap at the door of Sanadhi street. Father has not given any other work. So his work brothers, beggars work is restricted to that. He said that. Then I can't uh, say anything more than that. Then so many people to ask him to. In that place, I would have had at least about 40 50 darshan in Sanadhi street. Once he asked me, how many times have I had darshan here? I said, I have not been counting. Is it 29th time you have come? <laughs> he started telling the time. Then it's okay. Then number of devotees used to come there. He used to sit there on the payal. All of them will be seated, including Mahadevi ki. They will all be singing, chanting Nama. When I come, he will just take me inside, close the door. And he will be with me and all of them are singing. Once I told him, there's a big story, I'm going to make it very short. Once I told him, nearly one hour, 45 minutes he was with me. I told him, Swami, I feel very guilty. I'm taking all your time. And so many people waiting for that. You have nothing to say about it. Father knows about it. Who are tell about this beggar's time? I sure, perspired. Then he said, he patted me and said, even his beggar's course is a blessing. Father says, spend 30 minutes more with this Swamaraj. We can't ask the Mahatmas what they are doing, why they are doing, because we cannot understand. They see you, see inside you and see through you. What happens later, they know. So that happened. Then little by little number of people were asking, why don't you have an ashram, why don't you have an ashram? Yes, this beggar does not want to have an ashram. In 1993 he was persuaded and he said this beggar may or may not come there, but you can have an ashram. In 1993 when Bhagavan was very sick at that time, he had high fever, nobody was there to take care of him. Some devotees were offering him some liquid food. At that time, Mother Deviki told him, I have to take care of you. You either come to Sudama or I will stay here and help you. Yogi told me, Thirumanamana has not taken kindly to this beggar. It was this beggar, at that time he was uh, uh, around about 78 years or so, he said, if this man leaves with woman in the bazaar, what will people talk about this beggar? So this beggar agreed to go to Sudama. Then later he said, father had some purpose also. He wanted his beggar to be nearer so that the ashram could be built. Mm -hmm. So he came in 23rd November 1993. He shifted to Sudama and till he went to the hospital sometime in August, he was staying in Sudama throughout. These two mothers, Vijay Lakshmi and Devi Kema, and then two other sisters, Raja Lakshmi and Vijayaka, were taking care of uh, Swamiji. 
One thing we must learn from Swamiji is the punctuality. The time he comes, morning 7 o'clock and adjust your watch. 10 o'clock and adjust your watch. Evening 4 o'clock and adjust your watch. He was so punctual. And uh, if Father gives him a command, he will obey that command only. I'll give you a small instance. Normally the car used to go to him in the evening by 3.45 so that they can reach this place at 4 o'clock. One day he asked the car to be sent at half past 2. The car went there with the driver. Yogi got down from his house, sat in the car. And he was not telling anything. Half an hour later the driver asked him, Swami, you asked me to come, I come, you have sat in the car. You have not given any direction. He said, Father has asked this beggar to get the car and sit inside his. He has not given the next direction. Let Father say what this beggar will have to do. Then we can see. That's the type of uh, uh, Father's guidance. Though he himself was the father and son, he had that practicality for our sake. I must tell you in this connection, I told you, I asked him, son of the street, why don't you go and meet more devotees, speak to them. After this was built, he told me, do you know why this has been built? This beggar wants a resting place. That's why this awesome is built. Then he told me, I asked him, now, it was a big hall. They say it will accommodate about 4,000, 5,000 people. Do you really think that so many people will come here? He said, this place is not sufficient. People will not be able to enter into this place. The crowd will be more than the Vatican. If people anywhere come near this place, they won't go empty-handed. Even nearing the place, they will go with Father's grace. And then I asked him, very stupidly, but I got the answer back. You said in Sanadhi Street, you are to take care of only those who tap at the Sanadhi Street door. Why do, you want to take, why do you want to take care of all these so many thousands of people? Have you changed your mind? Then he said, this beggar is consistent in being inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Then he said, just, just as Arunachal is asking me questions, but this beggar does not doubt the wisdom of Father. I got the message. <laughs> Whenever a guru says something, you accept it. Then after that, he was something to me like a mother, like a father, like a friend, philosopher. He was not mere guru only. He had so much of confidence in me. He said, last days he told me, you are not given anything. Even if you found some fault with this beggar, you told this beggar. I have never seen anybody else talking like that. So freely with this beggar and tell only the truth. That's why we have become very close. Those are the last words. And then he said, Father wants me to tell this Varnachalam that he seated inside just now Varnachalam's heart as he imprisoned this beggar in his heart. So uh, that is over. Now then from the ashram, it's uh, people who are in charge of the ashram buying the land and all that. When they wanted to build the ashram, they thought, how are you going to get so much of money? How are you going to build an ashram? Then Yogi told me, those friends wanted to build a small hall and get a lot of cottages for them to come and stay. But father has given this beggar a bigger plan. This father has acted only according to the beggar. They thought they will not be able to get money. The beggar is a beggar, but father knows what to do. They went away. Doesn't matter. Father has got this ashram. Every day morning, he will come here wait for the construction to be, see the construction going on, climb up the ceiling, he'll catch hold of my hand and don't leave this beggar, catch hold of correctly and then he'll say that sometimes he'll catch hold of the driver's hand, something like that will do and whenever I'm here, it was so graceful.